so excited that the weather held out. Um, and we're also very excited that our good friend Irene DuPont um, is going to tell us all about this adventure she went with with her latest book, um, New Hampshire Covers Bridges. Um, I don't believe that Irene really needs an introduction. Everybody knows her work in some aspect or another. Um, and Irene is a really exciting artist who tends to focus on some individual thing at different times in her life. And this time we are at the Covered Bridges and her love for the Covered Bridges <coughs> in New Hampshire. Um, so just join me in welcoming Irene and she's going to tell us all about her wonderful book. Well, thank you, thank you very much, people, and thank you for coming, even though, thank God, we didn't get the snow. My sister has it out this, and on the coast. But I would like to say that my first book that I did on Covered Bridges, believe it or not, was in 1986, which, believe it or not, was 29 years ago when I think about it. Talk louder? Okay. And uh, I also want to thank my husband, who just said, speak louder, was the fact that he's the one that trooped me around to find all these bridges, okay? And uh, the first book was printed locally, but it was also put together help with the high school kids, because I was a high school teacher at Nashua High for 35 years. What did I teach? Photography, okay? So that was the best. But in the interim of teaching photography, I got the idea to start to photograph the bridges. And I wanted to do a set done on silver print with hand coloring with martial oils because I wanted to teach the students how to do this. So when I did assemble this whole business of those bridges at that time, and at that time I really did not have them all, so to speak, because um, we did the best we could. There were 72 that we did capture. Okay. Also, just to sort of introduce a little factor, when I had this body of work done, C-SPAN was just coming into being. There was like no particular thing. It was just coming into being. And they presented to all the schools a contest nationwide to do something with C-SPAN in your classroom. So I got the brilliant idea of teaching the kids how to photograph off the computer, not off the computer, off the television screen. We didn't have computers then. And so I said, okay, you take and photograph off the television, we print the picture up, and you make believe you're a newscaster. So that's what the project was. When C-SPAN and Time Warner presented this, cost, uh, this uh, contest, I submitted it. Well, I never thought I'd win, okay? I won. And it was like a shock to me. We won $1,000. I did. I also won a television for my classroom. So I had my own TV at that point and a recorder. Also, we were flown, my husband and I, by pri private plane down to Washington, D.C. to C-SPAN to receive the award. It was like, oh my God, I can't believe this. But anyway. We went, in doing so, Time Warner also presented me to the congressman here from New Hampshire, which was Sweat. In talking with him, he says, I would like to have some of your work exhibited here in the Cannon Building. And I, oh, that's wonderful, but I can't afford it. Time Warner stepped forth and said, I will give you another $1,000 to frame all your work, bring it down here, we'll have an opening, and they'll send it all back. So that's what was presented to me, and I did it. So I'm very happy to say that the whole set was exhibited at Washington, D.C. in the Cannon Building for two weeks. That was my bazaar, I guess. <laughs> Plus, I had to put on it that it was sponsored by Time Warner, okay? So that was kind of the first sort of thing that sort of got me going on all of this. And there's one picture left in the whole set. The whole set has been sold individually here and there. And the last one left, as I have on the wall there, is um, of a bridge that we took when we got there. It was raining. And my husband says to me, 
I says, rain it. He says, I don't care. Take it. We're not, we're, we're going. Take it. So I got out and took it. So it's a, a bridge that was taken with the rain, and you can kind of see how it was. Anyway, getting back to why did I do bridges, I don't know, really. It was just a fascinating thing with me about why they got started and what they were going on. But when you look back in the old days, when tourists were coming up through here, they were going by stagecoach, they were trying to pass the waterways. And what was built in some early parts was platforms, <laughs> where they would take the people, put them on the platform, pull them across to the other side. Well, after a while, they decided to make these platforms permanent. And that's when the covered bridge started. Now, why did they cover them? Okay, some people say, well, they covered them to protect what was being the wood and, and so forth, and it's true. Why are some bridges no windows in? Because when they took cattle across, if there was windows in the bridges, it would startle the cattle. So some were built with no windows for that reason. So it, you know, there's different reasons for different things. So in getting to define what is a bridge, okay, a bridge is really a structure erected across a walkway or over a river or a stream to allow a person to come from this side to go to that side. Now, one good thing that I have to say is in acknowledging all these different bridges, I sort of did some research, and I have on the wall over there a layout of the different early bridges. The first bridges were built by this guy called Burr, okay? And he built the bridge, and it was sort of a king shape. He called it a king shape. And then they sort of extended it, and they called it a queen shape. And then all of a sudden, they put a bow in it to make it stronger. So as time e went on, so did all of this go on. And the economical reasons for building these covered bridges was to go from one side to the other side, obviously. They even charged tolls because let's face it, they were building bridges, they wanted money to help maintain the bridges. So there was tolls on a lot of bridges. Back in 1825, the heyday was when there was, believe it or not, 10,000 covered bridges here throughout the whole New England states. As time goes on, because of building now with iron and other ways, Okay, it dropped down to only 950 bridges. Now, the thing that happened in 1950, the government passed a ruling, and it's called the Surface Transportation Uniform Rehabilitation Act, and it is to preserve any bridge that is a wooden bridge to preserve it. So that's why, and here in New Hampshire, we're very fortunate. We have a group of people that look out for all these bridges. They form this group and they watch over. Something happens, they, they look on it and they rebuild it. Some bridges now have cameras on. As, as well as you know, the Jackson Bridge, for example, has been hit three times already this uh, past year because somebody, quote, didn't drive straight over the bridge and hit the corner. Um, the Windsor, Cornish Windsor Bridge was also hit by a truck who thought he could go through and the truck was a little bit too big. So, you know, we have incidences like that, but now they've put um, a lot of cameras in these bridges. So, we have preserved our bridges. The largest bridge that I know of, that at that point in time, was built in eastern Pennsylvania over to Phillipsburg, New Jersey. And that bridge lasted for a while and then it deteriorated because of storms and so forth. Okay, I am going to, let's see if I can, I'm not kosher on all this. Um, this is looking at a bridge. Uh, is that a little fuzzy? I don't know, how do I, it's okay. Uh, this is looking at the bridge up in Littleton. It is built from one parking lot to go to the main street. And I captured these two people walking over. They're at a distance, so I didn't have to get their permission slip to do it, okay? 
but it just shows you that there's also iron bars in here to help support this. This is over the Amanusik River, and it's a newly built bridge. It was built just recently. Now, this is a, another thing that I noticed when I was doing more research on this. There is 192 covered bridges at this moment in the New England states. Vermont has 99, New Hampshire has 59, Maine has 15, Massachusetts has 12, Connecticut has 6, Rhode Island has 1. Okay. Now the three bridges that we count in New Hampshire, well, Vermont wants to count them too because they cross the Connecticut River. Okay. But New Hampshire says, no, we're counting them. Okay. So that's what we count. We do have six railroad bridges here, six railroad covered bridges. There's four in New Hampshire, and there's two in Vermont. Now, two of the ones that we did have burnt because somebody was vicious, okay? Now, what I did in my book, I broke it down by single, multiple, and then private and railroad. That means that when the bridge was built, it, there's no span in the middle. It goes from this land, this piece of land across, okay? Now, this is the Swansea Slate Bridge, uh, 1862, as you see. It does have some iron bars in there to help support it because during the time frame, things are starting to sag, so they did put some iron turn belts in it. Let's see if I can do this now, okay? This is the number nine, the Hopkinton Rowell, and it's over the Kentucky River. And they said that what happened with this, when cattle was being brought back and forth over this bridge, it was shaking off of its pier, because they don't really support putting them down on the pier, they just sort of sit on the ends. And so they did put another pier in there to hold it, and that was in 1930 to make sure that it wouldn't move. This is number 13 bridge in Warner. It's called the Waterloo. It's over the Warner River, and it has been repaired. It was built in 1840. It was repaired in 1957. It was repaired again in 1970, and then presently it has been repaired again. So they're keeping up with these bridges, but you can see how it sits on this side and then it goes straight across. So that's why it's one span over. So I didn't touch nothing. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is the um, Warner Waterloo, and it's over the Warner River. No, I'm sorry, this is number 16. This is the Andover Sillyville. It's over the Pleasant Stream in um, backwater. It flows underneath, that's the place. And it's allowed only foot traffic. Some bridges now, they allow only foot traffic. Okay, this bridge is number, uh, number 18, and you can see the highway has passed it by in 1964. They've since, I've taken this picture though, they have repaired it so that it, you know, it's in better repair than what it was, but it's still there. Okay, this is number 19, and it's again in Langdon in Drewsville. It's the shortest coverage bridge. And again, the highway passed over this in 1955. So we are very fortunate. <laughs> Louder, my husband says. We have the shortest bridge, and we have the longest bridge. This is the shortest bridge, and later on I'll show you the longest bridge. And this again was passed by, by the uh, road in 1955. And it's, it's still in pretty good condition, as you can see. And they've painted it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have it in my notes. It's in my book, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the Cornish Dingleton, and this bridge was constructed 
in a schoolyard, okay? So the, the children actually saw this bridge being built in the schoolyard, and then it was pulled by oxen into its place. Again, it was damaged, though, in 2016 when somebody drove and missed the edge and hit the corner of it. So this bridge definitely has a camera on it again because uh, I guess it's, you know, it's narrow enough and people can't drive straight. So, <laughs> and the funny part about it is I was asking my uh, stepdaughter because she married a tasker. And this bridge was built by a James Tasker. So I was asking her to check with her husband if maybe in generations the Tasker did belong, you know, come down through the history of with them. And she said she didn't know, but she was going to check with Gary. The other thing is I have a book that I wrote on um, the memories of Long Pond because my husband and I purchased a camp on Long Pond in Northwood. And so I wrote a book on the memories of it and I did research on that whole area. And again, Tasker was a name that owned a lot of property there. They owned an inn, they owned a stagecoach, and they ran, uh, Route 4 is what goes right through Northwood and they used to cut a lot of uh, pine trees off of his property and take those huge big pine trees down to Portsmouth for the ships. So the, the book, ha I just have a few books left there if anybody's interested in purchasing them. And it tells about some of the history of Northwood and again of uh, our cottage and so forth there and the people that are on that body of water. Okay, this is the Pittsburgh Clarksville. It goes over the Connecticut River. It connects Pittsburgh and Clarksville. But the problem with this right now is Pittsburgh claims it's theirs, Clarksville claims it's theirs, but they each don't want to pay for repairs. Because they go, no, you own it, no, you own it. How can we repair it? And you see what they did in the middle? Because the middle was coming down, okay? Now you can see where the bow is in that bridge, and that was the addition that was added to try and strengthen the bridge. Now, nobody drives over this. This is a walking bridge also. <laughs> this is another one in Pittsburgh, and this is called Happy Corners, okay? And this is over Perry Stream. You can drive over it. It is small, and you can also see it has the, um, the bow in it to help sustain it, but it is a small um, bridge. It's not, you know, as large as the other ones. It's unpainted, it's weathered, and it's the oldest in a sense, 1800. So that's when that one. Okay, then Pittsburgh has another one. Pittsburgh has three. So if you ever go up along the border area, be sure and go and see all three. Okay, this is over the Perry Stream also, and again, it's only foot traffic, and you can kind of see it's bending in the middle. Okay? <laughs> bending in the middle. A lot of people fish in that stream around there, so when you go sometimes you see a lot of people fishing uh, in there, and again, it's foot traffic only. This is Campton, and it's called Turkey Gym. It was built in 1883. Uh, it was, it, a flood took it down in 1958. And believe it or not, it was destroyed again in 2011 by the hurricane Irene. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> and it was rebuilt again in 2016. But believe it or not, again, it just flooded just recently in 2016 because the water came so high, in order to go to a campground, you had to go over this bridge. And I don't know if you remember reading it in the paper, that the people on the campground got, they couldn't come, they couldn't come across because the bridge had moved with the water, okay? But it's fixed again. So <laughs> hopefully they make it higher. Okay, this is the Jackson, the Honeymoon Bridge, built in 1876. 
called the Courting Bridge. Now, oh, it's over the Ellis River. It's painted red, because my, my pictures are all black and white. But they added the, uh, the side so pedestrians could walk on the side of it in 1930, because too many people were walking in the middle when people were going through it and so forth. A lot of brides and grooms that get married up in that area, they want their picture taken in front of this bridge. This bridge also has been hit three times already. Uh, just recently, within the last year, somebody ran into the corner of it. And they said, oh, that's no problem. But you figure the corner is important because it holds up that corner of the bridge. So again, they've installed a camera over there. OK, this is the Winchester Ashalot Bridge. This is painted white. It's really a beautiful bridge. It was built in 1864. At that time, it only cost $4,650. And at the first time that it was built, it had two walkways. Now it only has one. It had a walkway on both sides. This walkway was removed, OK? And you can see they've placed bars on the side here, though, to help hold it. And this bridge is number one. Does anybody know how they numbered the bridges? OK, New Hampshire is smart in a sense. They said, OK, we're going to number the bridges so everybody knows where these bridges are located. They started with this one for number one. Because if you look at the state, comes down like this, narrow at the top, comes down, curves over, and then blast, blossoms out. OK, right here is the ash lot, number one. So they start number one, two, three. They go all the way up to the top, around the top, back down, over, around, over, through, and then back down. So that's how they're numbered. They're numbered with this one as number one, because it's really a prize. Also, this place, what they do, this town, they close a bridge once a year, and they have a festival on the bridge, so that they put tables in there, and people come and bring food and everything. It's sort of like a potluck supper that they have to advertise and to enjoy the bridge. Also, this is really kind of reminiscent, too. When my husband and I were thinking of adopting a child, believe it or not, Billy was in a foster family on the other side of this bridge. So every time we went to visit him, we had to cross the bridge. So this bridge really is quite reminiscent of the fact that we adopted Billy many, 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 many years ago. <laughs> He's married, got a, a, grand, a child and a grandson and the whole nine yards, OK? <laughs> is that right off 119? This uh, uh, bridge is right off of there, yes. And when this bridge was built in 1864, I think I said this, cost only $4,650 to build at that time. OK, this is our pride and joy. This is the Cornish Windsor Bridge. It was built in 1796, and then it was refurbished in 1824. Then it was refurbished again in 1828, and then refurbished again in 1866, OK? And then in 1954 again, 1988 again. But believe it or not, it was a toll bridge, OK? And the state bought it from the people that built this bridge. And uh, they bought it in 1936. They charged a toll for a couple of years. And then the state said, no, no more toll. So, but it is the longest wooden bridge. It is a two-span bridge, as you see. And I can remember my husband and I going up there when they were fixing it up or rebuilding some parts of it and structuring it. And you can see how it kind of bows a little, but it's still as far the finest, one of the finest covered bridges here in North America. And it is the longest two span in the world. Wow. OK? And the builder to that was James Tasker. So that's, again, why I asked um, Roxanne to check with her husband. And it is a civil engineering landmark. So I mean. This is up in Cornish. It's a beautiful bridge. It really is. This also, 
It goes over the Connecticut River. Yes, right over. Uh, also, this one here, Bath, and you can see it's a four span. It's 375 feet. And when they first built it, it was fine. But then the railroad tracks were going to go through. So in order to have the train go through, you can see how they raised it. So if you look at the piers, you can see how they put the addition on over here to raise it up so the train could go through, and then how it diminished and diminished and then onto the land. And they've just finished fixing this bridge up again, because I remember seeing it in the paper. It, again, also is a beautiful, beautiful bridge. And again, you can see they have little few windows in it, because remember, way back when, when they brought cattle over, they couldn't have windows because the cattle would get shook up. They'd think they were going into a barn instead. Okay, wait a minute, let me hit this again. Okay, now this here is a railroad bridge. And we're very fortunate because we have it locally. It's in Kentucky. It's over the Kentucky River. It was built in 1849 by the Boston and Maine Railroad. And it's the oldest surviving railroad bridge. And again, New Hampshire can take credit for this. It's the oldest surviving railroad bridge. It did get washed off its piers in 1936 with a flood. They put it back, and then in 1938, it got washed off again. Then, uh, for, from 1962 to 19, 1990, it was a warehouse. And I can remember going, because there's an ice cream shop on the other side of it, and I can remember going there and having an ice cream sundae and so forth, and I said, what a shame. That covered bridge is sitting there, and there's a sign painted all over the sign uh, because they used it as a warehouse. So it had canoes in there and boats, and you know they were using it as a warehouse for people that had boats and so forth. But then it now has been resold and resold, and now in 1990, okay, they plan to restore it. There was a big article in the paper just within uh, last year that they're going to restore this bridge. It's still in perfect condition, though. I really say that. And there's a train depot that's close by that was an older building that was sort of falling apart. And they're going to take that depot and they're going to fix that up so that they're going to make the bridge with the depot. And they're hoping to get a hold of a train to put there too. So it's going to be really a nice um, tourist attraction to go and see. And that little village is a really nice village too where this uh, railroad bridge is. So that, that's, that's another plus for New Hampshire, I can say. Okay, now this is another plus. Okay, this is up in Bartlett. And believe it or not, this is a gift shop. So this was sold to a person and the person has restored it and has kept it and the gift shop is in half of it but the other half you could still walk on if you want to okay but it is a gift shop and that's another plus for us whoops come on okay here's another railroad bridge that we have and it's in Newport the rails have been removed from it though but this way here you can you know walk through also in order for us to take this, my husband and I had to go in with snowshoes because we had to park the car and then get on our snowshoes and walk in with uh, my camera and so forth to take this, this picture of this bridge. But um, it was built in 1896. It was restored again in 1907. This is another plus for us. This is New England College in Henniker. And what they decided to do in 1912, they wanted to build a bridge over that waterway. And so they built the bridge on land with the students helping and so forth and so on. And then when the winter became really, really cold, they hired somebody that had some oxen and they pulled the bridge across like they did in the old days to actually place it in place with the oxen. So again, uh, I think New Hampshire is really a plus plus. And that's a beautiful bridge to go see. 
Now, this here is John Goth Mill Bridge. It was built in 1962 over the Bowman Brook. It was attached to the John Goth Mill in Bedford, New Hampshire. And it used to be the walkway that you would go to the Sheraton Wayfarer, okay? And then the presidents would come and stay in the house that was on the side that overlooked the covered bridge that you walk over, okay? Now, what has happened, though, there was a lot of controversy when all that land was sold and, the, and the, the hotel was torn down and all this good stuff and everything else. Nobody wanted the bridge. It was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Well, anyway, I feel really bad, but in a way I feel good because Wentworth decided to buy the bridge because uh, that food place didn't want the bridge. They could not touch the mill, though, John Goff Mill. They could not touch that because that's under National Register. So you can't touch something that's under National Register. But the bridge was not, even though the bridge went over the falls and went to the mill. Okay, So it was sold to Wentworth. And in fact, the other night on TV on Chronicle, Fitz was talking about the covered bridge from Bedford that is now in Wentworth that you can walk across to go to the shopping place. So it served a good purpose, okay? So that's a really, really nice factor. But I feel bad that we lost it in Bedford. I mean, I'm not a Bedfordite, but I, we still. And I do have two pictures over there that I did shoot. One of the bridge in the winter, which is printed on a 35 millimeter picture, a film, and developed it myself as well as a small one. And they were I can't print another one. I don't even know where the negatives are, to tell you the truth, and they're the last pictures I have. Let's see. Okay, this is a funny little bridge. This is on Store Roll in Merrimack. It was built in 1990. And again, what was happening, they had a little bridge there, and it was falling down. And they didn't, the town said, well, it costs too much to have somebody come and build a bridge. We don't want just a plain bridge. We do then they controversy, controversy. Anyway, what they did is they farmed it out to this company in Michigan. This bridge was built in a kit form, <laughs> brought here by truck and put together, and it's shiplap together. And it's really an interesting little bridge. And I'm glad that they proceeded to do that. So that way there, the town got away with it really cheap, but it, it served its purpose. Okay, now getting to the little old man, okay, uh, what happened in old times, freezing and thawing and so forth, and this was taking shape. In 1805, Nathan Hale and Lou Brooks discovered this face. The Appalachian Mountain Club reported that the forehead was starting to slip. So in 1915, this Reverend Guy Roberts determined to fix it with a Mr. Gettys. So they kind of got up there and started chaining some of the rock together and so forth to hold it, and everything was going fine. In 1945, the old man became New Hampshire's official state emblem. Then in 1953, more cracks were coming. So they again started to repair it, repair it. In 1955, President Eisenhower dedicated this to a stamp, New Hampshire stamp with the old man on. 1957, major repairs were done on it by Neil Nelson. And then he kept checking on it, checking on it, and repairing it, and so forth. 1976, Ronald Reagan came and visited it, and it was a big to die for the state. In 1989, Debbie Nelson was the first woman to actually get up there and help her father repair it. In 1998, everything seemed to be okay. And I went up in September 13th in 2002 and photographed it in the fall, which I have some pictures over there. And then in November 11th, I went back up again in 2002 and photographed it in the winter with some of the ice. And then 2003 May, foggy day, our old man disappeared. I have a timeline of it in the corner of the pictures over there 
you're more than welcome to take a timeline of, the, which is written by Weir's Times. Okay, so this was the winter shot. All my work is all on 35 millimeter negatives. I printed everything myself. I taught photography. I had my own dark room in my own home. My husband can attest to it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I have pictures over there of the old man. And then uh, this was the last my husband took of me taking pictures, looking through one of the uh, covered bridges because I did have to go back and re-photograph some bridges for the book uh, because I had to add some bridges that I didn't know existed or I say they now, uh, there's more new bridges that have come out about and I have those in there. Oh, I, you don't need to know all this stuff. <laughs> okay. So that's, uh, I appreciate everybody coming and, talk and listening to me talk about the covered bridges. They're really, uh, how should I say, from my heart, as well as the old man. And uh, I have a lot more information in the book about different little other things, but I didn't want to cover all the bridges, because as you know, we have 59 of them. We're second in the New, Han in the New England states to have them. And I think New Hampshire should be very pleased with what they have, mm -hmm. really very pleased. And they're all able to be visited. And the fact that we still have railroad bridges to visit that are covered bridges, as <laughs> as it's going like this, <laughs> and that as well as the information on the old man. So have something to eat. There's plenty of things here from a Roby store. There's uh, cookies from Leah's husband, Alan. Okay. <laughs> Questions? Questions? Yeah. Uh, from your history of the Wentworth Bridge, that has to be one of the youngest covered bridges in the States. Yes, it is. Either yes. that or the one that was, that was made in Michigan. And, and, you know, That's one, the one, youngest. One, I think one the one that made in Michigan is the youngest because uh, they, they debated about, well, they didn't want uh, McGrath come down and all that. Now the one on Swam Lake, that bridge has been completely rebuilt and they built that on land too and pulled it over on Swam Lake. That's a beautiful, beautiful bridge. bridges are still being built. Yes, yes. Wow. But I, I didn't put that in my um, mm -hmm. uh, pictures. But uh, the one on Swam Lake is also very beautiful too because it, it crosses over to get to that because my husband and I went up there and saw it. And I took pictures of it because it's in my book, the new ones. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I think that New Hampshire is still doing pretty good, really pretty good. This you know how many we've lost? Or I know there used to be one lost on a rail bridge. Yeah, that caught on fire. Yeah. Well, that's the trouble. The, now there's one in Franklin. My husband and I went to find the one in Franklin because that was called the Upside Down Bridge, where the tracks were on the top and the covered bridge was underneath. But somebody set fire to it. And so all that was there was the railroad. I said, I'm not taking that. I'm not putting that in my book. So that, that just happened uh, within the last couple of years that somebody burnt that. It's like, I don't know what's wrong with some people, you know? You know, it's just really, you know? It's mischief. The one in Town is teenagers. Yeah, see, teenagers, see? Leah remembers because... Yeah, and that was a beautiful bridge. But again, I, I can't put it in the book. It wasn't there when I did the book. We lost like the first one, I think. Because I started doing the same thing many years ago, and I swear there were 70 or more when I was doing it. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I don't think the Vermont numbers theirs, their bridges, like we do. They've lost a bunch of them, too. Yes, they have. Yeah. You know, and I mean, some bridges are worn and torn because it, they're walking bridges now. Right. Yeah. And then some places, some um, hotels and that have made little walking bridges, but I, I, I didn't get to put those in. I said, you know, enough is enough is enough. So, so I have the book and it's uh, special for 1995 yeah. if anybody wants it. I have some pictures of the old man. 
Uh, I have my uh, second book, The Memories of North Pond, uh, Northwood Lake, I mean, uh, yeah, Long Pond in Northwood. And I have some postcards if anybody's interested in postcards or in sets. If not, I think you, thank you for coming. Thank you for, I um, have something to eat. And if there's anything else I can answer, I'd be Not happy. Anywhere else in the country that has that many? No, 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 not New at England all. Has most of them, New England and Vermont had well, New England period, but New Hampshire and Vermont have most of them. Yes, yes. It's funny though. Rockingham County here in New Hampshire has none. <laughs> has none. Rockingham County has none. Pennsylvania. Right, Pennsylvania, because of the Amish them building over things. I don't know how many, though. At one point, it was 219. Really? Yeah. yeah. That was 80s, and that's the way they were And New York has a two-lane. New York has a two-lane. You can go both ways on the bridge. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, two-lane. Yeah, I forget where it is, but it's yeah. Yeah, no, I've not gone beyond the New England. Yeah. Well, there's quite a few that you can drive two cars. Yeah. That new one in Plymouth, you put trucks and cars. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you were saying, yeah. Because, see, that was a burnt bridge. The kids burnt that down, and then they built it. Uh, no, the old one is. The old, the old one is. And then Stock just got to, through refurbishing theirs and opening it up to traffic. Before then, it was sort of sit to side. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it.